Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to start a new topic, which is on impedance matching. Before I formally start on impedance matching, let's understand what are the two conditions. What is a match condition? Let's understand how can we actually create a match condition. Next will be on mismatch. Let's understand what is the consequence if we have a mismatch condition. This will be the part one series discussion on impedance matching. So stay tuned over here to receive more information on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's jump to straight. What is a match condition? Under match condition, okay, we need to fulfill this condition, which means that ZL is equal to Z0 and also equals to ZS. Let's understand what are all these. The figure above show a transmission line. So this thicker solid line is basically a transmission line okay, with characteristic impedance Z0. Okay, which means that, for example, for this case here, this transmission line has a characteristic impedance or they have an impedance which classified as Z0. Okay, the transmission line is actually connected between a source impedance Okay, so over here you can see that this is actually the source, okay, which is connected to a source impedance, and on the other side they actually connected to a load impedance, okay, which is classified as ZL. And in order to have maximum power transfer, okay, we need to have this situation: ZS must be equal to Z naught, and also ZL is equal to Z naught, which means that when they actually under this situation, maximum power transfer will occur. And also, this is what we classify as match condition, which means that the value must be the same for these three elements here. Let's take a look on this in order to understand better. Okay, typically, this is how we connect a communication device. For example, we have a transmitter. Okay, we have an antenna. We actually link the transmitter and the antenna through a coaxial cable, for example, for this case here. Let's understand what is ZS or source impedance. So the source impedance is basically how much the impedance actually look like when we actually look into a transmitter. Okay, for example, over here, we look over here. So basically, there will be only so-called the source impedance for this case here. So this is what we call a source impedance. Next, as I mentioned, this is a transmission line. For example, a coaxial cable typically has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. Next will be on the antenna, which is on the load side. So this is basically the understanding of this match condition. In order to have a match condition, okay, so ZS need to be 50 and ZL also need to be 50 in order to have a match condition as illustrated here. Now on the next slide, let's understand why it's always desired to have a maximum power transfer. This is what I have mentioned earlier on under the match condition. Let's simplify this diagram into ZL is equal to Z0. So this is what we classify as a match condition. In order to understand better, okay, let's move to a daily life illustration. For example, a sound wave. Okay, for example, this boy is actually shouting towards the wall. So this is the signal energy they actually generate by the sound wave of the boy. So this sound wave actually propagate. Okay, propagate, propagate, and finally hit the wall. So once it hit the wall, there can be one possible outcome. Some will be reflected back. Some will be able to penetrate through the wall and finally result at the outcome on the other side of the wall. So this is also the condition of match. Let's understand this. This is the total sound wave produced by the boy. So once it hit the wall, Okay, so we can assume that the sound wave actually split into two portions. One will be reflected back, another one will be true absorbing, and finally at the outcome on the other side of the wall. So let's understand this back 
Okay, so under maximum power transfer from the source to the load, all the energy from the line is absorbed by the load. Okay, which means that whatever signal that is actually generated by the source, okay, they will propagate along the transmission line. All the signal must be absorbed by the load. And in order for this to occur, they must not be having any reflected signal. Okay, let's take a look on this sound wave again to understand better. As I mentioned earlier on, this is basically the sound wave that is produced by the boy. Basically, this thing actually travel from one medium to another medium. For example, over here, okay, the medium is air. Over here, the medium is the wall. So there's a so-called different medium. Okay, because of this, the reflection can happen. And also some will be absorbed and finally at the outcome on the other side of the wall. So what does this mean? It means that okay, we do not want to have any reflected signal. So if we can remove away this reflected signal, okay, we can assume that most of the energy will be able to penetrate through the wall and finally will be at the, at the outcome on the other side of the wall. Okay, so if under the match condition, okay, which, which means that if let's say we can remove away this wall, then we can ensure maximum power transfer. Can you imagine this? So in order to have this match condition, I must ensure that the medium, okay, for example, for this case here, let's imagine them as an impedance. Okay, we need to have the impedance exactly the same. When we actually have this, okay, we can assume that the sound wave will be able to propagate further away for this case here. So this is why we need to have a maximum power transfer. Okay, as we want to deliver all the signal to the load, we do not want to have a refraction. Okay, because once we have refraction, okay, the signal or the power actually is lost, which is undesired. So therefore, under match condition, okay, we want 100% all the power will be able to deliver from the source to the load. So this is what it means here. So transmission line is non-resonant or flat. So under match condition, there is no standing wave. Okay. Later on, I will, under, I will explain what is called a standing wave. The impedance anywhere along the transmission line is equal to Z0. Okay. So this is a very long transmission line. For example, you can imagine that they can be in terms of 100 meters away, let's say. Okay. So under this match condition, which means that the impedance along any point of the transmission line they will be exactly at Z0, okay, which is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. For a match lossless line, okay, which means that, for example, this coaxial cable, there won't be any loss. Okay, the voltage and current are constantly, okay, which means that they are exactly the same value. The voltage at the start until all the way at the end, okay, it will be having the same amount of voltage, same as current, because we have a match lossless line. So this is what it means. Under lossless, which means that the resistor is equal to, or the impedance is equal to zero, or a very small resistance, which can be neglected. Okay, but under the practical case, we know that this is not possible. So under the match transmission line, with some losses, okay, which means that some impedance from the coaxial cable for this case here, okay, we realize that the voltage and also the current they actually decay slightly, okay, which means that your signal actually reduces slightly along the distance or along the distance of the transmission line, which means that the voltage reduces slowly, okay, maybe not so drastic as shown over this graph here, but you can imagine that the RMS voltage and also the RMS current actually reduce slowly. So this is under the practical aspect on the transmission line. Signal can propagate in both directions in a transmission line. For example, you know that in coaxial cable, okay, we don't have indicate whether this is input or output. So this means that the signal actually can propagate okay, either from the left to the right or right to the left. It doesn't matter. Okay, signal propagate from source towards loop is called incident wave. Okay, for this case here, for example, the signal actually propagate from the source all the way to the load. So we call this as an incident wave. Signal propagate from the load towards the source is called reflected wave. Okay, so you can see that, for example, this incident wave propagate and finally they hit this load 
impedance and basically it create a reflection so basically it's called under er okay you can see from here they actually reflect the back so they actually classify as reflected wave so what is standing wave standing wave is basically a combination between incident and reflected wave which means that these two add together this is what we call a standing wave and when we actually get the standing wave okay so this is typically an example okay so it's not going to be a constant number okay you can see that we have a v max we also have a v min okay which is contributed by the standing wave okay because the signal are not going to be exactly the same and maybe in short the characteristic impedance of the transmission line won't be always ideal for example a number 50 ohms Okay, it actually will have some variation and because of the little variation and also plus the load that we connected to the transmission line, let's say there is a mismatch, it actually will create some amount of energy to be reflected back and basically this will outcome a very standing wave as illustrated in this diagram here. And again, I have indicated what is Vmax and what is Vmin. Vmax is the maximum possible voltage and also the minimum voltage which is also classified as V min which means that the voltage along the transmission line they are actually not fixed they actually varies the power generated by the source will be partially absorbed by the load the rest is reflected to the source which means that there is no maximum power transfer as I told you earlier on okay for example for this case here if I cannot convert all the transmit energy from the source, they propagate through the transmission line. And if I cannot guarantee all of them will be delivered or absorbed by the load, some will be reflected back. And basically, when we actually have this reflected back condition, we will not be having a maximum power transfer as we have some loss in terms of reflection. So this is what it means over here. Extreme case of mismatch condition occur when ZL is either open circuit or short circuit. So you can see from here, this is under the extreme case, under the mismatch condition. Okay, either okay, we have this open circuit or we have this short circuit. Okay, so later on, on the next few video, we were going to discuss more on this. But over here, you can see that under this mismatch condition, okay, either the ZL, which can be open circuit or short circuit, total reflection occur at the load and basically no power is absorbed by the load okay which means that for example if i generate some power okay which is going to deliver to the load but under this mismatch condition okay for example you imagine that all of them actually reflect the back nothing is absorbed by the load so this is what we call a total reflection occur and nothing will be absorbed by the load for a mismatch line the impedance is different at different points on the line okay the impedance repeat at every half wavelength okay so you can see that i think this diagram explain much more clear you can see that after a half wavelength okay the another v max actually occur another half of wavelength another v min actually occur so this is what you want to explain over here so let's come to the disadvantage of mismatch Okay, once we have mismatch, okay, we have the presence of reflect signal, okay, which means that a huge amount of signal may be reflected back to the source, okay, in addition to the incident signal or the apply signal. Okay, when there's a mismatch, firstly, the maximum power transfer will not be able to obtain, which means that we experience losses, which is may not be desired because we actually typically how much signal that we actually generate we want it to be fully absorbed by the load. But because of mismatch, some will be reflected back. And once there will be reflection back, there won't be have under this situation, which is called the maximum power transfer. Another disadvantage of mismatch is the reflection of power from the load. Okay, they can actually damage the source. Okay, for example, when we actually design this, okay, when there is actually a reflection back, okay, so this reflection back, if let's say become big enough and if imagine over here if we connected to either the transmitter or receiver when we actually switch to a receiver mode okay this mismatch here can actually create some cable to the receiver so this is what it mean over here so they may actually the reflection of power they may actually 
damage the source. For this case here, imagine initially I was actually a transmitter. After that, I switched into a receiver. And when we I actually switched to a receiver, okay, this reflection of power, okay, they can create some substantial damage to the source. Presence of high voltage standing wave may cause cable dielectric breakdown. Okay, so which means that if I have this very high voltage standing or VMAX, okay, this may cause the cable dielectric to break down. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Thank you so much. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.